chapter 2 of gita contents of gita summarized sanjay said seeing arjuna full of compassion his mind depressed his eyes full of tears madhusudana krishna spoke the following words the supreme personality of god had said my dear arjuna how have these impurities come upon you they are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life they lead not to higher planets but to infamy o son of partha didn't do not yield to this degrading importance it does not become you give up such petty weakness of heart and arise o chastiser of the enemy Arjuna said, O killer of enemies, O killer of Madhu, how can I counterattack with arrows in battle men like Bhishma and Drona who are worthy of my worship? It would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers. Even though desiring worldly gain, they are superiors. If they are killed, everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood. nor do we know which is better conquering them or being conquered by them if we kill the sons of dhritarashtra we should not care to live yet they are now standing before us on the battlefield now i am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness in this condition i am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me now i am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you please instruct me i can find no means to drive away the this grief which is drying up my senses i will not be able to dispel it even if i win a prosperous unrivaled kingdom on earth with sovereignty like the demigods in heaven sanjay said having spoken thus arjuna chastiser of enemies told krishna govinda i shall not fight and fell silent o descendant of bharata at that time krishna smiling in the midst of both the armies spoke the following words to the grief stricken arjuna the supreme personality of god had said while speaking learned words you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead never was there a time when i did not exist nor you nor all these kings nor in the future shall any of us cease to be as the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age the soul similarly passes into another body at death a sober person is not bewildered by such a change o son of kunti the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in the due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons they arise from sense perception o skyon of bhrata and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed o best among men arjuna the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both is certainly eligible for liberation those who are seers of the truth have concluded that the non existent the material body there is no endurance and of the eternal the soul there is no change this they have concluded by studying the natures of both that which pervades the entire body you should know to be indestructible no one is able to destroy that imperishable soul the material body of the indestructible immeasurable and eternal living entity is sure to come to an end therefore fight o descendant of ratas neither he who thinks the living entity the slayer nor he who thinks it slain is in knowledge for the self slays not nor is slain for the soul there is neither birth nor death at any time he has not come into being does not come into being and will not come into being 
he is unborn eternal ever existing and primeval he is not slain when the body is slain o partha how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible eternal unborn and immutable kill anyone or cause anyone to kill as a person puts on new garments giving up the old ones the soul similarly accepts new material bodies giving up the old and useless ones the soul can never be cut into pieces by any weapons nor burned by fire nor moistened by water nor withered by the wind this individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble and can be can neither be burned nor dried he is everlasting present everywhere unchangeable immovable and eternally the same it is said that the soul is invisible inconceivable and immutable knowing this you should not grieve for the body if however you think that the soul or the symptoms of life is always born and dies forever you still have no reason to lament o mighty armed one who has taken this this his birth is sure to die and after death one is sure to take birth again therefore in the unavoidable discharge of your duty you should not lament all created beings are unmanifest in their beginning manifest in their interim state and unmanifest again when annihilated so what need is there for lamentation some look at the soul as amazing some describe him as amazing and some hear of him as amazing while others ever after hearing about him cannot understand him at all o descendant of bhratas he who dwells in the body can never be slain therefore you need not grieve for any living being considering your specific duty as a kshatriya you should know that there is no better engagement for you thus fighting on religious principles and there is no need for hesitation o partha happy are the kshatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought opening for them the doors of the heavenly planets if however you do not perform your religious duty of fighting then you will certainly incur sins for neglecting your duties and thus lose your reputation as a fighter people will always speak of your infamy and for a respectable person dishonor is worse than death the great generals who have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only and thus they will consider you insignificant your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability what could be more painful for you o son of kunti either you will be killed on the battlefield and attain the heavenly planets or you will conquer the, and enjoy the earthly kingdom therefore get up with determination and fight do though fight for the sake of fighting without considering happiness or distress loss or gain victory or defeat and by doing so you shall never incur sin thus far i have described this knowledge to you through analytical study now listen as i explain it in terms of working without fruitive results o son of partha when you act in such knowledge you can free yourself from the bondage of works i stop the chapter 2 in the middle and will continue in the third video thank you